Well then, in those days, the great philosopher, Apidorus, he, the true scholar of Xenophon himself, the great Stoic, happened to be studying in the academy and the lyceum when the Aristotelians challenged him and said, you said just now, that a good man would not feel a rack, although it scorched his bones. Well, that is what the master said. Well then, you will not fear this. There is an old column house down near the courts of justice. When no man may stay a night. But if you fear nothing, if your philosophy teaches you a piece of mud, that surpasses all understanding. Then you should have no such fear. And so it was. Aphidorus agreed that he would spend a night. A night in the columned house. And he said, If I um, get to the mystery of this house, all I ask is that you promise Athens to honour justice and to swear by whatever is in the house that whatever there has happened to them may never happen again. And so it was. All the three men of Athens swore such an oath. And Aphidorus, taking with him a little piece of black rye bread and some dark, dark red port wine. Oh, and a work of Plato went to the great columned house and there lit a rushlight and there read by night and in the middle of the night it seemed the darkness was so profound and in the middle of the night it seemed loud voices sounded hungry hungry feed us feed us feed us your soul Feed us your body, we were slain unjustly. Feed, feed, feed. But Apidorus nearly turned a page, and Apidorus tended his light as the voices grew louder, angrier, more strident. There we lie under the tree, there we lie under the fountain, we for whom all justice was lost, we who had no requiem. We, who had no food when we asked it. We, who have no memory, shall have your soul. And it seemed that this darkness grew hands and writhed. I stared out of the night, like the memory of the moon after it is destroyed, like the ocean on the darkest of nights, as it roars its danger. So the voices bellowed. But the philosopher merely turned a page and tended his light and said, My, my, what the scholar says here is a peace beyond understanding, a learning beyond wisdom. It gives me then a peace equal to the eternal heavens. And when the voices heard that, they raged all the more and said, Why should you have such a peace? While we must live in torment. While we rage into the night. While we cannot say our final goodbye. Why? Why? And it was like a vortex of darkness went round and round the little circle of light. But Apidorus, looked up and he saw the first grey of dawn and he said why indeed eternity is given to us all living and dead if you would find peace in yourself you will find it in the world for is that not what the scholar teaches us revenge is its own misery 
and the voices called loud and strident. What do you know of revenge? We who have been lost. Apodora said, Come, my friends, share a food with me, and then as the sun rises, show me where you are, that I might find you. And he took then the black rye bread, and he threw it into the dark. And there was silence, utter silence. And then he poured out most of the port wine there upon the black earth and took a little himself and ate and drunk with the dead. And then as the sun rose, he went, following instinct or whispered word, he never said which, he went to the broken courtyard and there in the broken courtyard he saw an old ring and he reached down and he tried to pull it up but he could not pull it so he laid upon it his cane and he laid upon it his book and he laid upon it his rushlight and he went then to the marketplace and men were wondered at him but he ignored them he went to the butchers but also to the priests and he said to the butchers and the bakers, bring food, bring wine, bring what you value most. I will pay for it. But we must all dine together. And I will need also your strongest men. And to the priests, he said, send whatever perfumes that honour the dead best and your finest singers of holy dithyrams to the dead. And so it was, they all met in front of the colonnaded house, and Aphidorus led them in to where the tomb was. And he had them lift up the great, great holding stone. And there they counted eight bodies, laid in the dark, writhing, chained, as men chained, deprived of justice, deprived of food, eyes starting, skin scarcely worn upon their long dead bones. Apodorus greeted them as old friends. He poured out wine. He poor gave them meat. He gave them bread. And all around the priests sung dithyrams as Apodorus and the men of Athens feasted with the dead in that colonnaded house. And men wondered at it. And then he had them taken out and lain there in the courts of justice. And he had all the men of Athens honour their oath upon those dead, upon that day, honour their oath that from that day on they swore that they would keep justice for all men, whatever city they came for, that they would never again let men be locked up in the dark without food or justice. And when that was over, it was like there was a sigh, as of a heart mended, as of eternity we found. And Apidorus went home to Rome, while Athens, it lived in peace. <laughs>